sin, the lost and forsaken. Gather us in, the blind and the lame. All right, here we go. So, welcome back to the Uper Farmer. Glad to have you here. Um, you may notice that the audio has taken a drastic turn. If you watched the last video about the winter chicken coop, uh, you may have heard that I busted my headset that I use for recording these videos. Headset still broken. I haven't been able to make it to the store yet. Um, even though I, uh, it's been almost a week since it broke, I haven't been able to make it to the store to replace it. Um, I tried one of my kids' headsets. Uh, that didn't work. It kept activating Siri on my phone. So, unfortunately, you have to deal with some uh, bad audio. But again, we'll get through it. This is kind of part of the learning process. So, here we go. For tonight, I'm smoking the Ricochet, a Ricochet cigar. Kind of a fun little band. I do love the bands on cigars, the Straight Razor Brilliant. I know I'm pronouncing that, uh, that name quite horribly, so I'm sorry to the manufacturer. As far as the drink tonight, a good old Stella. Uh, they make really good ciders, really good lagers, but this one is the Midnight Lager. Um, I have had this one uh, while I was out at Deer Camp. This is one of the ones that I picked up and tried. Uh, surprising beer, actually. I should have shouldn't be surprised. I've had Stella's hard ciders. I do appreciate those ones. Keeps a very good head on the beer. Um, again, very very dark dark beer. Quite tasty. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes. Oh, that's good. Um, one, I might mention stuff like brands of beer, cigars, even other YouTube channels. I don't actually make any money off of that, nor do I ever plan that I will. Um, this YouTube for the Uper Farmer blog, it's never been something I've ever even imagined I could make into a career. Um, it's something I just do for fun, a creative outlet, something to say that I did it, um, something to try out. A lot of these little projects and stuff that I do um, usually they help me in my professional life, whether that's teaching or working in disaster preparedness. So, uh, no, I don't ever plan on monetizing these videos, although I did read that YouTube now can put ads on your channel, um, and you won't see a red cent. I'm not really for that, but again, they need to maintain servers and storage units and all that to keep videos going. So, I suppose they, uh... They got to make their money somehow, and I guess uh, putting ads on people's YouTube channels, even though they're not seeing a cent of it, makes sense. Um, enough about that. Another housekeeping thing. This is something I just learned. Uh, again, don't make a red cent for saying this, but Cigars Daily, it's a cigar shop um, out west. Have a fun YouTube channel. Highly recommend you check it out if you enjoy cigars at all. Uh, they run the American Viking cigar brand. It's a completely American brand of cigars. Uh, very tasty. I've had them. Um, still need a little bit of work. I think they're still working out some of their processes and whatnot. They've uh, definitely got some winners and they've got some losers in their lineup. But uh, they just launched a program where they are donating to the Fallen Heroes Fund. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know what that is, it's a fund set aside um, national fund if you are the spouse or child of a fallen paramedic, a firefighter, a police officer, this fund will actually help give you money for education for your children, offer counseling, offer uh, mentors even, to kind of help your, especially the children, um, deal with the loss of usually a father, Again, you know, public servants are normally males, but there are females out there, but a father, a mother, the loss of a parent. Especially the loss of one normally in a very, um, how should we say, violent manner normally. Uh, when a public servant dies, especially on duty, uh, it's, 
it's usually a pretty pretty tragic event all around. Um, so go to American Viking. Uh, they are advocating their brick and mortar stores where that carry their brand. If you buy box sets of their cigars, they'll give you a fight coin, um, which looks really cool. I wish there was a, a distributor here locally, a brick and mortar store locally that would sell these. I'm definitely planning on switching when I buy instead of these sampler packs that I keep buying. Uh, when I actually buy brand cigars, I think I'm switching to American Viking. Very good group of people. Um, and the fact that they they back public servants means a lot to me. Uh, so anyway, about the topic of tonight's video, I do did learn that uh, topics are probably better than just rambling. Um, so tonight, let's talk about hunting. As I said earlier, on my last video, I was out at deer camp um, when everything for making videos went south um, between having my headset die. Um, right now, this is pretty uh, backcountry farmer youper setup. I still have not gotten a new, new uh, holder for my cell phone. Um, so it is duct taped on to my old uh, tripod. And uh, if it falls, we're just going to roll with it. But hunting something I grew up in the UP, um, it's an amazing cultural thing. Uh, it's a rite of passage for children. Um, it's an identity up here where we associate, especially those of us who've been in this, this UP and up here in those rural parts for a long time, um, there were hunter safety classes that were taught in many schools, still are taught in a few schools in the UP. Normally opening day is considered a holiday. Um, that's no joke. There are schools that will still close in the UP for opening day. Um, there are different uh, companies that even recognize it. Even the Michigan House and Senate uh, get hunting off. That is a tradition uh, that was started way back when, uh, when hunting really was a source of food. Um, and it still is. I remember growing up as a kid, we had a neighbor who, if uh, dad didn't get um, something during deer season or during the major seasons, uh, they'd go without meat. Uh, personally, I've had this happen for me. Um, when I was, uh, after my rounds of ambulance accidents and I kind of wanted to step back from EMS so I could step closer to my family, um, I took a job at a mine, but like with starting most new jobs, there's that lag period where you're not exactly getting paychecks yet, but you're still supposed to work. And honestly, I, I was more excited to get away from the rig and towards my family that I didn't exactly do the math. Um, plus, we decided to buy a new house instead of renting, which was another faux pas on our part, learn, little learning bumps there. So what ended up happening was, is we ran pretty short on funds. Uh, well, it just happens before I started that job. I think actually just, just shy after starting, um, I went out deer hunting and bagged myself. Uh, the rack wasn't impressive. It was only about a four point, but the body on this deer was immense. Um, easily weighed out at 200 pounds, uh, again, before being, being parted up. So we got a good, I believe it was 75 to almost 100 pounds worth of meat off this deer. Massive, massive deer. I'm guessing there were some cornfields um, not far from where I was hunting. I'm guessing one of these deer must have wandered off from the cornfields to go get the apples I had from the, the apple tree. Um, but that really was. That was meat on our table. Um, having that, that frozen meat, having that security that it was there, really took a huge burden off of me. Um, I had plenty of meat to feed my family, plenty of uh, food in my mind. I was less worried about my job um, and about providing for my family. Um, and that's what hunting is. Hunting really should be enjoying the security you get from taking an animal, um, from harvesting an animal. Uh, there's a interesting book called The Abbo Man's Guide to Survival. Highly recommend you look that up. Um, he talks about, instead of calling it harvesting or killing, he really refers to hunting as making meat. Uh, it's a very interesting idea to say I'm going to go make meat. Uh, 
and there's a lot of people who are anti-hunting, and I do respect their views. Um, some of them can are very articulated, understand uh, the ecosystem, understand animals, understand the sacrifice it takes. Um, and then there's others who are anti-hunting that we've lost our connection with our food. They'll gladly go buy a cheeseburger from McDonald's um, and not think anything about that patty of meat in there. Now, when I go hunting, it's, it's there. I know I can see that animal. I see it in nature. I see it walking around. Um, I know I've fed it usually. I know that it lives in the area. Um, with bucks especially, you know they probably have just uh, bred out a few does. There's a stronger connection when you go to take that shot and you know you're going to take a life. You're in that moment. It is real. Um, it's not like going to the supermarket and buying you know, three pounds worth of hamburger only to have two pounds of it go bad. Um, I don't think I've ever let even one ounce of venison go bad um, because it is. It's such a struggle to get it. You spend weeks preparing, months preparing. Um, you sit out in the cold. You wait. You try to call deer in. You try different signs and scents and anything else you can do to bring a deer in. When you take that shot, the respect for that meat is amazing. Uh, it, it almost becomes... And I don't use this term lightly. It almost becomes like a religious experience that you have taken a life to feed yourself. And that's how I believe hunting should be. Now, are there people out there who do it for sport, who just like the thrill of the kill? Of course. Is there that thrill? Yeah, definitely. Um, you get an adrenaline rush when you make contact with an animal with, with your, your weapon. It's there. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to say I haven't had an adrenaline rush after shooting an animal. I'm realizing that I have, have been successful. Um, but usually once you're processing that animal, you have to gut it out. You feel how warm it is inside. The warmth is the one that always gets me. Um, that really brings it home that this was a living creature that gave its life so I could sustain mine. Um, so when I go hunting, I use up as much of the animal as I can. Very little goes to waste. And that even includes, that especially includes when we're raising animals. Um, these chickens, again, they're going to live through the winter, hopefully saw their winter in coop. Um, I, I have a deep respect for these animals when I take their lives. Um, I do everything I can to make it very humane, very quick. And then we salvage as much as we can, whether we're using the feathers, um, organs even using organ meat because it is such an amazing thing that we have. And I've spent uh, six months to a year usually raising these animals. So there is a connection. Um, now, I don't see them ever as my pets. I've never seen one of my, my uh, livestock as a pet. But I still respect them for what they are um, and realize the effort and energy I've put in and then what they're giving to me. Um, which, again, they're giving their life so I can sustain mine, but that's really what life is. Uh, whether you're a vegan and just eat plant-based life, you still kill a plant to sustain yourself. It dies. Um, that plant will not grow again. Um, if you eat meat, you, are, you should hopefully know the sacrifice involved, that that was an animal, that was a living creature, that has given its life so you can sustain yours. And there is that uh, philosophical even approach that the circle of life and one day, you know, when I die, there's that question, what do you do with my remains? Now, I am very religious and I believe I have a soul and when I leave my body, it's just material. Um, I've heard other hunters talk about how they want their remains put back to nature so that animals can feed off of them. Um, their organic material feeds the soil so then deer can feed off of that. Again, their life is given to sustain other creatures. Romantic, um, that's an interesting idea. Uh, not really into that one, but if that's what my family chooses to do, I would not slight them in the least. 
Um, Because again, I believe my soul is gone. Uh, That body just becomes organic material at that point. Um, Other big things with hunting out here, I talked about it being a culture, and it is. You have people who go to deer camp, um, where people, some other areas, they save up their vacation to go to Disneyland. Many of these guys will save up, and girls will save their vacation to spend two weeks at deer camp, two weeks tracking down an animal. Um, And a lot of people on the outside, they think it's barbaric. They're only focused in on the kill. And it isn't. Um, Many deer camps, it's a time for camaraderie. Um, It's a time to let loose the social norms that you're expected to maintain. Um, How to speak, how to dress, how to act. Um, You can go be yourself. Um, It's tradition. Going out and hunting um, for the sole ability to hunt. It's not a survival basis. It's something we really only saw post-World War II. Um, When we had that baby boomer generation, um, they especially experienced hunting as more of a recreational. That's when we really started to see the culture start to build. um, Where people didn't necessarily have to hunt because if they didn't, they starved. They hunt... They went hunting as a part of something bigger than themselves and connecting with a simpler time. Um, And that's what I really view hunting as. It's an experience. It's a rite of passage. And it's also a time to just get away from society. Uh, I have never been more relaxed, uh, more at ease, uh, more zenned out, if you will, than I am when I'm outside in the middle of the woods tracking down an animal with a high-powered weapon in my hands, whether it's a bow or a a rifle, and you sit there and you almost become part of nature. Uh, Now, I've never really got that feeling. I've done a lot of backpacking, a lot of hiking, canoeing, love the outdoors, but when I'm canoeing or backpacking or hiking, I'm not with nature. Um, I'm observing nature. I am a participant in nature. With hunting, you are involved in the food chain. You are involved with being part of nature. You're the one who is almost like a wolf or a coyote or a bear. Um, You're there, you're with it, you're a part of it, you flow with it, you have to act a certain way, Uh, you can't make sounds, you can't... Um, whatever, move, and then you're taking on your primal role, and that is to balance out all the prey out there. Um, Your job is to be the predator. And that feeling is very zenning, that you are really part of nature. Um, So it's interesting. A lot of people are against hunting. I understand their arguments. Um, I don't adhere to them. But I can respect them. As far as saying, you know, it is taking a life. And there should never be a taking of a life. I can understand that and agree with that. But we're not taking a life and it being meaningless. This isn't murder. Where you kill someone for the sake of killing them. Or for revenge or a feeling. This is taking a life to sustain another life. This is using that organic material once you have killed that animal to sustain you. Um, I've had people say that it's inhumane to hunt an animal, that they suffer. Um, I really do counter that. People who use that argument clearly have never actually observed nature um, and seen animals kill other animals. Um, normally you look at even the most apex of apex predators who are Um, very effective and efficient at killing, they still start eating the animal while it's alive. Um, It's not always dead when they start tearing into it. Uh, You look at videos of, uh, there's one on Facebook where a bunch of vultures are taking down a separated fawn. Uh, They're biting at it, they're ripping into it, they're tearing into it. Predators in wild are not very effective killing machines. Uh, They rely a lot on exhausting an animal, running it down, uh, beating it down, making small cuts and lacerations. 
I would counter that any hunter who makes a even semi-vital shot on an animal will cause that animal to subside and die quicker than any predator out there. Um, and again, that's backed up by observing it in nature, watching apex predators hunt their prey and kill their prey. It's not a gentle process. It's not an easy process. So although I do respect that, especially when you have bad hunters out there, guys who take really bad shots, uh, ones that you should never take, that's one of the things I train my children in. I would rather pass up 10 bad shots to wait for that one perfect shot that I know I'm going to get vital organs and I know it's going to be a clean hit. Um, I've passed up many. I've passed up many who then it haunts me in my dreams replaying could I have made a good shot. Um, I'm always happy though that I do pass it up. I've never been horribly depressed passing up the shot on an animal um, because I know that had I taken it and I missed or I wound or grazed an animal and made it suffer by running off, um, probably dying of an infection later, I just really couldn't live with that. So again, there is, I understand that argument with anti-hunters. Um, another one is that hunting is a very archaic skill and something we have evolved beyond. And this one I'm actually very much against, believe it or not because I think we need people to be more connected with their food. Um, the whole going to McDonald's and getting a quarter pounder with cheese, there's no connection there. There's no respect for, for the life of that cow that uh, gave its life for your hamburger. Even the price of that hamburger, uh, you usually get a cheeseburger for 98 cents, a, uh, McDouble for a, a buck to a buck fifty. That very much cheapens the life of that animal, and it's it's sad, really, how disconnected we've become. Um, I've had people who I know consume meat tell me how wrong hunting is, how evil it is. They don't have a connection to their food. They don't know where their food came from. They couldn't tell you uh, what uh, that animal went through. Uh, what, was it healthy? Was it abused? Was it injured? They just know that for less than $2, they can get a tasty sandwich from pretty much any restaurant. So I'd actually counter that I believe hunting should be more what people do. More people should hunt to really get a connection where their food is. Um, it is a slap in the face when you go hunting to know that you are taking a life. And you do experience that meal differently. Um, I've had commercially bought uh, venison, uh, where there's venison farms, they have deer farms that then they harvest the deer. Um, that's the only legal way you can technically sell uh, venison products. And it is, it just, it tastes different. It's not quite the same as going to a, someone's house who hunted that animal. Now, two differences there, one, we can argue that there's a flavor difference, that you can just taste the difference in the meat. I don't really think that's it. I don't think you can taste the wild in it necessarily. Um, but usually I've never sat down and had any wild game, uh, except for maybe fish. Fish is kind of one of the exceptions, but any land mammal game, um, even birds, where as you're eating it, the person who, who harvested that animal that made that meat will have a story. They'll tell you how the hunt went. They'll tell you where they got the animal. That animal is, is memorialized. They're remembered, um, they're cherished. Again, their story lives on as you eat that meal. Um, even when I've just cooked up venison, I remember the hunt that I got that animal with. Uh, what happened? Was it cold? Was it raining? Did I track it for a long time? Did I track it for a short time? Um, I always do, even today, I bring up one of uh, the, the deer I ended up shooting just before I moved to Ishpeming. Um, we were out at deer camp. Uh, and for some reason, uh, my wife, my two kids, uh, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, they all decided to go out with me. Um, so I didn't think I was going to get a deer that year. 
Uh, but my son really wanted me to get a deer. He wanted to see dad get a buck. Well, I didn't think it was gonna happen. I went out uh, the first two days, saw nothing, saw nothing. So Sunday came around, we're packing up. And my son comes running up and he's like, dad, 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 there's a deer at the apple tree. And I didn't believe him because there was nothing coming towards any part of this property. Um, so I still, you know, I think he was six, eight years old. I was like, okay, son. So I walked off to go see and sure enough, there's a good sized buck. Again, four point, but a lot of big, solid animal um, eating at the apple tree. So I go, I load up my, my 30-30, um, sneak outside. I'm lining up, getting ready to take this shot. And it dawns on me that my son, who desperately wants to see me take a deer, is standing at the window watching me get ready to take this shot. Um, so I can't miss. I can't miss, I can't uh, pass up on this shot. I have to wait for the perfect opportunity. Um, now I was lined up, I had a good shot. This is one I would take any day of the week. Good profile shot. Um, but I was going through my fundamentals. Pull the gun tight into my chest. I got into a good shooting position, a seated position, hands up or elbows up on my knees, locking my joints. I'm focusing on my breathing. I'm focusing on my heartbeat. Um, I'm actually concentrating, being in the moment. I really like precision shooting, especially long distance precision shooting. Um, I'm just waiting for that deer to take that half a step forward. And anyone who's been hunting knows what I'm talking about. A deer has a good profile. Um, you can see the vitals, but if you shoot too soon, you'll actually hit the shoulder blade. So I'm waiting for that deer to take that nice step forward. Um, and as I'm, I'm zenning out, I'm meditating, I hear boom, 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 shoot, dad, shoot, as my son is pounding on the window. Um, so it goes from probably one of the best place shots, probably would have dropped that deer right at the apple pile, uh, to one of the, the quickest snap shots as, I, as the deer goes to run, I jump up, um, quickly aim, hold my breath, take the shot, um, do get a nice solid double long shot, the deer runs off into the woods. Um, I track it down and actually be able to retrieve it. I um, was able to take the good shot again. I would have passed it up had I not known I could take it, but I knew I could. Um, but that's a story I tell still this day. Um, explain to people about hunting. That's what it is. It's sharing that moment, that experience. That deer will live on forever in my stories. And then no doubt my son will probably also share that story. That's kind of my two cents on hunting. Again, it's very cultural. Um, it's not about the kill. It's about feeding families. It's about connection to your ancestors. Um, it's about being in the moment, which I think a lot of people in this world today could definitely do more of, be in that moment. But anyway, I think I've ranted and raved long enough about hunting. Um, hopefully next week I will have a new setup for my camera, a new microphone and headset. Um, so the sound is better. I think I got the light better. I'll have to check in the video. I might also work on some lights. Uh, but anyway, hope you all have a good day, and uh, we'll talk to you later.